Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode we will be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. In this episode, we will be discussing marketing your new small business on social media. Now, social media is one of those things that I don't want you to get totally hung up on. It is great for your business. For some of you, it's an absolute must. And for others of you, it's not a big thing. Some people have found a lot of success by being very active on social media, but honestly, it comes down to where your ideal client is. Now let's talk about the number one social media site that most people are active on and tend to get the majority of their customers and clients from, especially in our smaller towns, and that is going to be Facebook. No, I don't mean that you need to go out and buy Facebook ads. If you want to do that in the future, by all means, go for it. But the number one way to get customers on Facebook is just by being an active member of your community and being seen every single day. This doesn't mean hitting them over the head with what business you have. But what I mean is just be an active member of the community. By being an active member of your community and being in those community rooms, they're going to figure out what it is that you do because you're going to let it slip out every one to 10 posts or in comments that people make because you're also going to be on there answering people's questions that happen to fall in your field of expertise. And if somebody asks for someone that does what it is that you do, of course, you're going to volunteer yourself and say, you may not know this, but I'm a blah, 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 and I can solve that problem. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do is in your personal page, make sure that when people are stalking you and they look you up, that the top of your headers happens to mention the fact that you do A, B, or C, whatever your business is going to be, because they're going to put their little cursor over your face and they're going to look up your personal page. And if you can just put a little blurb on there, then more power to you. Yeah, that doesn't mean you can't have your family, can't have your dogs, you can't do whatever, but you could also say, you know, the name of your city's plumber or whatever the case may be. It's just something subtle that's going to be able to help people see what it is that you do, especially if you claim what you're employed, that you own such and such business. That's also going to pop up and something that simple even will work. I've seen people where they're holding their dog by their work truck and now they can go, ah, but they also can say, you know what? The truck itself says what it is that they do. And they're sitting there holding their dog or they're petting their dog or they're doing whatever. Their family standing in front of it. It just shows both sides of you, the personal side and the business side. And it will just send a message out to people that this is what you do. Now, you're also going to want to have a business page, but think of it this way. It's more of a landing page for people to learn more about your business and what it does. So it's critical that it has on there a lot of the same stuff we just talked about in the website uh, episode that we just did. People want to know what the business is. They're going to want to know what your business hours are. They're going to want to know how to contact you. They're going to want to know what pain points you solve. Just make sure that your business page has those main core things on it and use it more as as an additional page for you, like a website page. And for some people, they've never put a website together. They just have people go straight to their Facebook page. That is fine, especially in the beginning. I wouldn't do it long-term because you're at the beck and call of Facebook and what weirdness they do in the future. But it is a way to do it temporarily until you can get your website up and running is you can just use a Facebook business page. But do you need to post things on your business page? You know, I'd put something on there maybe once in a blue moon. But listen, people don't see those the way the Facebook algorithm works, they're going to see those community posts way more often, uh, those active pages, because your Facebook page is usually not active, because you don't have a lot of people searching on it, looking for things. It's more of a stop, get in, get out kind of a thing. You're not going to get a lot of uh, juice out of that. But I would make sure that you put something on there once in a while in case somebody is searching or want to learn a little bit more about your business. It's a great place for you to post stuff. But once again, I'd post it in both places. I'd put it on that Facebook page, but I'd also put it in those community pages once in a blue moon. You know, like I said, you're going to spend nine times out of 10 on Facebook. You're going to just be you and be a valuable member of the community. One out of 10, you're going to do something about your business just to kind of keep planting those seeds. Because remember, people don't need you till they need you. So you don't want to be a walking uh, billboard of what it is that you do. I've seen people do this completely the wrong way where every single post that they did was hitting people over the head with what they did. It became very irritating and people got turned off. It wasn't until they kind of slowed their roll a little bit and became a real person. Remember, people want to do business with people, not with necessarily a specific business until they trust the person, then they want to do the business. So you want to, it's a fine line that you want to try to do. 
So just go searching for your local community pages. Sometimes you'll have one, you might have two or three of them. Every community, no matter how big or how small, are going to have a local community page. So you just want to be an active person in there. Be genuine, be yourself, and pop in for 10, 15 minutes. Please do not go down the rabbit hole of Facebook and be on there all day. That's not what you want. You just want to spend that 15, 20 minutes a day being part of your community. Don't go down that rabbit hole. Now keep in mind, Facebook tends to skew a little bit older and folks with a little bit more money as they typically are your homeowners out there. So you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you're on Facebook because more than likely your ideal customer is going to be on there. So do not miss out on the power of Facebook. Even if you hate Facebook, you've never wanted to be on Facebook, I promise you the majority of your clients are probably going to be on Facebook. Now, some people will ask about Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all these uh, all these other different types of social media. Now, those have a different purpose. If you think about it, people aren't trying to build relationships. You're not necessarily talking to people. You do on Twitter, but not a lot of people are on Twitter to have those kinds of conversations. But they are great for a backup because you do a lot of before and after. People are on there for videos. You can have some fun. You also have people that are following you that aren't necessarily from your local community. Whereas on Facebook, I would say probably at least half of the friends, quote unquote, that you're going to have are going to be in your local community. On these other parts, on Instagram, TikTok, and stuff like that, they're just not going to be as much with your local community. But if you have a business where you can ship outside of the area or do things outside of it, then they definitely are worth looking into. But they're not as good for your types of businesses for our local small business owners. But if you have a visual business, absolutely have another one. They can be companions. You can tell people to follow you on those and you can just do a lot of good before and after. So that way, when people are scrolling, they'll see your stuff. And then when they do need you, they'll think about you because they know that you are a local business. But make sure you put those same before and after pictures on Facebook as well as on Instagram, for example. Ultimately, when it comes down to social media, it really depends upon where your clients are hanging out. Like I said, if your client is on those social media sites, then you want to make sure that you you are there. Uh, don't try to do them all. Just pick two. Facebook is one and then figure out who you want your other one to do. You're just not going to get the bang for your buck, the, the juice for your squeeze, if you will. Uh, so there's not, a, there's not a lot of reasons for most of you guys to do anything beyond Facebook. But if you do, it's a great way to do it. But if you don't want to do any social media, that's fine as well. No one's going to push you into it. Uh, it's just another way of being able to get out there. And for most part, Facebook is free. You don't even have to pay, like I said, for all those ads that people do out there. Some people do them. They get a lot of business out of it. But it's just more to make you a real person in your community because the best referrals are actually going to come from other people. So what will happen is on Facebook, what ultimately ends up happening is somebody asks if somebody knows somebody that does ABRC and the community, the people that you've been building up that goodwill with are going to throw your name out there. And they're the ones that are going to be recommending you. And I've watched a lot of people blow up their business just by being part of their community. Now, one of the ones I didn't talk about was YouTube. Some people ask, should they do YouTube videos? Uh, YouTube is great for showing people how to fix things and how to do things. And you might be asking yourself, we talked about this a little bit on the last episode, uh, but if I teach them how to fix their broken toilet or their leaking toilet, will they not use me? listen, there's going to be people that are going to always attempt things on their own. What you're doing is you're trying to show them some goodwill by showing them the right way to do it. By you showing them the right way to do it and that you're a local person, when they have a project that they cannot do, or maybe they can't do that one, they mess it up. They're more likely to give you a call because they trusted you the first time and you gave them some good advice. The odds are that they're going to come back. So YouTube is another great one, but that does take time and it does take time to put those videos together. But if you did some quick videos while you're out in the field and just have somebody, your buddy or somebody uh, film you while you're doing things, uh, some people have done some really great stuff on YouTube and they're able to pick up a lot of local business. You don't have to get fancy. You're not on there to try to make money per se. What you're trying to do is just be somebody in the community that they find when they're Googling uh, businesses in a local community and they see you as a person talking about what it is that you do or showing them how to fix things. And it's another great way for you to be able to uh, do some stuff. So YouTube's another great one, I think, for a lot of small businesses if they want to try especially because it is so tied to uh, Google, which is the number one search site. And if you think about it, Google's number one search site and YouTube is the number two. So it's another great way to do it. So as you can see, when it comes to social media, you can do as little as nothing on social media and you can still build a great business. But if you're gonna be on social media, definitely 
check out Facebook. I think it's going to be a great way for you just to dive in, be part of the community. And if you're going to expand that, just pick one. I, I wouldn't do more than that unless you're just a social media person and you love being on social media. Uh, then you can do more than that. But in most cases, uh, if you do visual type stuff, then you can look at the Instagrams uh, um, or definitely YouTube for a lot of people just to be able to do short videos that they can just show that they're part of the local community. Um, so just another good way for you to be able to get some extra marketing out there for dirt cheap in most cases. All right, with that, let's head on over to the next episode. Bye for now.